What is the collaborative process? Well, let's take a look at it step by step. So first of all, one of the fundamental features of the collaborative process is that each spouse has their own collaboratively trained lawyer, and that person provides advocacy and legal advice to them during the problem-solving meetings. Our problem-solving meetings take place in person or online, and the feature is that we are meeting together so that we can avoid that telephone game where you might tell me something that I then tell the other lawyer who then talks to your spouse and then your spouse might say something back to your lawyer to tell me for me to tell you and of course as we go from person to person there's a, invariably going to be something lost in translation so it's important that we're all hearing the same information together at the same time. Now there may be other professionals involved on your collaborative team such as a mediator, a separation coach, a financial financial neutral, a sp child specialist, or maybe even um, somebody from your own cultural community or your faith-based organization, you get to design your collaborative team to meet your needs. All the professionals that are involved, and this includes the lawyers, are working together as a team to help you reach an agreement that will be best suited to the needs of your unique family system. So what happens first? Well, we invite you to go check out a couple of websites. If you're here in Saskatchewan, the Collaborative Professionals of Saskatchewan have a fabulous website at www.collabsask.com. And there's an International Academy of Collaborative Professionals. The website address is shared here in this PowerPoint as well for that, where you can get lots of information about the collaborative process. You will ultimately be choosing a collaborative collaboratively trained lawyer who will be your advocate in the process. Now, how does advocacy in the collaborative process work and how is it different than in the litigation process? Well, your collaborative lawyer wants to understand the things that are important to you, like your priorities and your goals. What are your concerns and fears? What do you hope for in the process and ultimate outcome? Come. Your collaborative lawyer is going to help you communicate the things that are important to you and will help you evaluate the options by asking if that option is actually in line with your interests. So rather than taking a rights-based approach that assesses what you are entitled to or your obligations, of course, we need to understand those because we are negotiating under the umbrella of the law. However, we really want to ensure that not only are your legal rights and obligations things that you understand, but that your ultimate outcome will meet the things that are important to you. Your collaborative lawyer actually also wants to know what's important to your spouse so that we can identify what the common interests are. Your collaborative lawyer will provide you with the legal advice that you need throughout the process to make sure that you are making informed decisions. Now, the collaborative team itself can, like I said earlier, look like however you want it to look. The collaborative lawyers are working together to ensure the interests of both spouses are considered throughout the process. And if you have children, the collaborative lawyers are also working together to ensure that it's the children's best interests that are being kept paramount at all times. Now, the other professionals on your team will be neutral experts, so they're not there representing only one of your perspectives, but instead they're bringing the specialized knowledge into the development of your separation plan. They are going to meet regularly to plan, to update each other, and to debrief following meetings. And there's 100% commitment. Everybody who's part of the collaborative process, including the lawyers, are disqualified from providing evidence or participating in any adversarial process. This way, you can be assured that nobody is participating in the process with sort of a back of their mind strategic approach to how they are going Going to use something against you in a further adversarial type of setting because everybody signs the participation agreement saying they are 100% committed to helping you work through this out of court process. Now the family coach also comes by different names. That might be um, 
the role of the mediator, or it could be somebody who has a social worker background. And this is somebody that's going to literally sit around the table with us and work with you individually to help on communication, to help you prepare for the joint meetings emotionally, as well as understanding the process steps. Implementation of interim agreements, because sometimes there are things that happen in between meetings that we're trying and the family coach can help help you make sure that those steps are being addressed. The family coach coordinates the team so that we're all following the same process and are on the same page. You might have a financial neutral and that financial neutral is crucial in helping you gather all the important information that's needed regarding your family property and income. And also wants to know what's actually important to you on this topic. So with your assets, that property, what do you wanna keep? Is there something that you think might need to be sold? Is there anything that would make sense to continue to hold jointly, maybe for the benefit of the children in the future? Do you have debt? If so, what debt might be paid? What, who's going to service that debt going forward? Is there a need for some refinancing? What are your short-term and long-term goals? The financial neutral is going to assist you with your budgeting and to help you understand tax implications and basically assist all of us in evaluating the options with respect to property division and support matters so that we can maximize tax benefits for the family system and help you work within your budget to address both those short-term needs and the long-term goals. Now, you might also want to have a child specialist involved, and this is somebody who can work with young children, medium-age children, even adult children for that matter, so that we can best understand what their needs are. This isn't a process that's about what the parents' rights are, but this is about advocating for an outcome that is going to minimize a negative impact on the child or the children and really normalize this transition as not a breakup of the family, Family, but a transition into separate and apart households where the child has more than one home and lots of adults in their lives that care and love for them. Now, you might be thinking, well, with all of these professionals, how much does this cost? Well, first of all, what you need to know is that the design of your collaborative team is entirely up to you. And how many professionals are involved is something that we need to discuss and to determine what's best for your particular family situation. But it, no matter how many people are involved, we're trying to take this approach that I referred to as the sharpest pencil in the drawer. So they having the financial neutral, for example, somebody who has background and training in financial matters, know what documents to gather and how to organize them and what the tax implications could be of one option versus the other option. Having that one professional with that specialized knowledge that the cost of that person is shared between you is way more cost efficient and time efficient than having each lawyer gathering all of the information and trying to seek out the knowledge and expertise that would apply to your situation. So though each professional would be billing at their own rate and in their own way, the cumulative cost will actually be, in most cases, streamlined and less than if you were simply working with two lawyers that were going back and forth between each other as opposed to all coming together so that the stories and the perspectives and the information and even the legal information that that's needed is all being heard together at the same time. You might also be wondering, well, how long does this all take? Well, it kind of depends. It depends on the complexity of your matter, how uh, long you've been together, how many children you have, uh, what the disparity of income is between you, how old your children are, what your plans are short term and long term. So part of what we do with you initially in the consultation process is to find out um, everything that you want to share about your story that can help us give you some feedback feedback into both what the likely cost will be as well as how long the process will take.
And what are the steps in the process? Well, step number one is designing your collaborative team. And of course, that starts by reaching out to a collaboratively trained lawyer and having some further discussions about the unique characteristics of your family system. Then whoever's all on the team, that professional, those professionals are going to have a meeting because we need to sort of plan for the overall journey together, but in particular for the very first joint meeting where we all all come together and uh, we it's not just the professionals who have to plan for that but it's also important that the the client and that client's lawyer have an opportunity to spend one-on-one -on -one time together to not strategize but to talk about the process and prepare for that first meeting and what do we do with that first meeting? Well, we need to review the participation agreement to make sure everybody's committed to this process. We want to gather some background information and identify your primary goals and interests. Uh, sometimes there's some pressing issues that need to be dealt with as soon as possible. And we wanna think about well, what information is needed, whether that's information about the law, if that's gathering documents, understanding some of the special needs that your child or children might have. That's the primary purpose of that first meeting. And then we're going to debrief that meeting. So the professionals will be talking about what worked and what needs to be tweaked for next time. And you will also debrief individually with your lawyer. And if there's a family coach involved with that person to be able to make sure that you understand uh, well what has gone on and what the next steps are. And so you can raise any concerns that you've had that you might um, want to raise privately. So there's opportunities uh, to plan for meetings as well as debrief the meetings afterwards as you go along, even in subsequent meetings. How many meetings do we have? Well, of course, that depends on how many issues there are to sort out and how quickly we can sort through those. But each meeting has sort of that, that same format. So we want to hear from everybody. We want to identify what it is that needs to be talked about. We need to explore some of the underlying interests and ultimately create some options to deal with whatever the pressing issue or issues might be for that particular meeting. And as we are thinking about the options, sometimes we identify where there's some homework that needs to be done, things that people ne might need to just think about or perhaps information that they have to go out and gather. And if you've reached an interim agreement if from one meeting to the next, sometimes we need to implement that. So for example, you might decide, well, perhaps we can try this parenting arrangement for the next few weeks and then we come back to uh, the next meeting and we talk about how that parenting arrangement worked and what needs to be changed if anything eventually you're going to get to a final agreement. And that final agreement is going to set out the uh, obligations that each of you have, your responsibilities, the accountability, what the plan is. And that's about the division of your property. It's about your parenting arrangement and it's about your support arrangements, your financial support arrangements for the children, as well as in some circumstances for one of you as the spouse that, um, perhaps is working towards developing financial independence. And we often will include review provisions because there are sometimes, even within a final agreement, some things that aren't going to happen until the future. So you need to be able to have some mechanisms in place to assist you when that time comes where you need to figure out maybe something a little bit different from what you had originally put in place. Some folks will actually want to talk about seeking a divorce and we will work with you to sort out the steps related to your divorce application. And then there are other tasks that come up. You might need to apply for refinancing. You might want to review your estate documents like your will and your power of attorney health care directive. And so depending on your needs, the process doesn't just come to a screeching halt once you have a final agreement in place. There may be some other things that we will be following up with and we're continuing to work together. 
So do you need some more information? There's lots of ways in which you can get it. We previously referred to you to a couple of different websites that you can access more information on, but please don't hesitate to shoot us off an email, admin at commonsenselawyer.com. You can also call us at 306-975-7151. And if you would like to meet in person or have a virtual meeting, we'd be happy to set that up for you. Thank you for watching and we look forward to the opportunity to work with you and tell you more about the collaborative process.